Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome here to the world of wine with Jimmy. Thank you so much for clicking by. My channel is all about wine education. If you are just a huge enthusiast, you love the world of wine, you'll find lots of information here to help you with your enjoyment, underlining your enjoyment of wine. But my videos also follow key syllabus and key text of major wine qualifications. So you will find this very useful for your wine studies. Here we are looking at the section on New Zealand, beautiful, fresh, aromatic wines of New Zealand. And we are going to go into part four. So this is series one on the introduction to New Zealand. Part four is looking at vineyard management. And there's quite a lot of specific things that happen in New Zealand due to its uh, kind of isolated location in the South Pacific, but also because of the climate and the weather that comes with that. If you do have any comments or questions, please do get in touch. You can comment on this video below. Uh, make sure you click like and subscribe as well. So the location of New Zealand is that it's in the South Pacific, fairly isolated. It's about 1900 kilometers uh, across the Tasman Sea to Australia, to Southeast Australia. It's about 5,000 kilometers from uh, Chile and cold Antarctica. And Chile is about 9,000 kilometers across the Pacific, as you'll see on that map. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the importance of the canopy. Now, we know from previous videos that New Zealand has significant amount of rainfall. It has a lot more rainfall than many other wine regions. And this is also paired with high levels of UV light. Sunshine, sunshine hours typically exceeding 2,000, and in fact, in somewhere like Marlborough, above 2,400 hours per year. They also have quite young fertile soils, and that's young in geological terms. Uh, so therefore, canopy management and managing the vineyard is very important for producing quality fruit. Okay, so what can happen in these conditions? So we know that there's going to be quite fertile soils. Uh, we discussed that just a moment ago. High levels of rainfall as well. And then coupled with plenty of sun and UV light means that we can get quite excessive vegetative growth of the vines and other crops as well. In viticulture with vines, this can lead to a congestion of the canopy, which can then create really a lot of shading. This can then also, uh, so this can lead to lots of shading because of that congested canopy. And this can create uh, problems with under ripeness of fruit uh, and therefore potentially uh, lowering the quality of the fruit. Now, what are the typical types of vineyard management in terms of training? Now, vines are generally trained and trellised via the vertical shoot positioning with two canes. You'll see the picture there in central Otago. So this is the kind of standard way in many places in the world have adopted VSP, vertical shoot positioning. But there certainly is an argument for other types. Now, some larger volume producers may use more complex trellising systems that have as many as four canes per vine, such as the Scott Henry training method. Uh, but there can be issues around that. There can be high yields, uh, which can be an initial issue for ripening in the cooler years as there's less ripening to go throughout the whole large vine. But there are many arguments on the positive side for something like the Scott Henry. Dr. Richard Smart, who is a key viticulturalist in New Zealand and a leading figure around the world in viticulture, often called the flying wine doctor, he is adamant that New, Zeal New Zealand's conditions favour the Scott Henry trellis 
for a number of reasons. Firstly, the VSP that we talked about on the last slide is best suited to moderate or low vigor vines. Now, it would be very difficult for anybody to claim that the major variety Sauvignon Blanc of New Zealand is low to moderate in terms of vigor. And in fact, normally we have fairly high intensive amounts of vigor with Sauvignon Blanc and other varieties in New Zealand. Secondly, because of this vigor and ensuring that the leafy and shaded canopies, the vine and fruit have a higher tendency to suffer from disease such as botrytis and powdery mildew. Now, both of these diseases are inhibited by UV light, the component of sunlight, and that is currently being researched. So if you have a lot more absorption of that UV light with the larger vine, then you are, of course, uh, mitigating the problems around mildew and rot. Also, the fruiting zone. So grape growers will tend to train the vines so that the height of the fruiting zone is higher compared to the vines that we may find in Europe uh, in terms of cool climate regions. The higher sunlight hours in New Zealand means that vines do not need reflected solar energy from the ground, and that's in order to ripen. So we can actually have the fruit higher. Uh, and also, when it's higher, it's more towards sort of head height. So it's actually easier to manage the fruit, certainly at harvest time as well. What about the yields we find here then? So the sufficient rainfall, the sunshine we talked about, remember, in excess of 2000 hours in most regions per year, and then the fertility high nutrient levels of the soil means that we have the components possible for quite high yields. And this is despite having very low densities, typically 2000 to 2500 vines per hectare. Um, we actually see that in 2018, about 70, 80 hectoliters per hectare is what we're seeing in terms of yields. The table that I've got here is showing you it tons per hectare. Uh, and if we take 2018, um, we are talking uh, 11 tons equates roughly to sort of 70 to 80 hectoliters per hectare. So, and you'll see quite standard that we are roughly sort of around 11, 11 to 12 uh, in most vintages. So fairly significant high yields can be possible in New Zealand. Machine harvesting is commonplace, mainly because many of the vineyards are flat. And actually varieties like Sauvignon Blanc, when they have a little bit of splitting that occurs because of this fairly violent action of machine harvesting, uh, there's gonna be a little bit of juice to skin ratio there, which is sometimes quite desirable for uh, heightened aromatics as well. Now, there's a lot of rain. We know rainfall levels in places like Marlborough are only sort of 750 millimeters per year, but that's on the higher side. But in places like uh, Martinborough, Auckland, they're up to 1200 millimeters per year. Coupled with issues around uh, warmth, certainly in the northern sections of Auckland, uh, West Auckland, we will find that fungal disease pressure is actually much more heightened, so we can have problems with those conditions. Um, one that you will know quite well is that uh, birds uh, the, are, are, are a big issue within New Zealand. Predators are very rare. So many different bird species thrive. These birds can cause substantial damage in vineyards, not only to eating grapes, but also damaging grape bunches so that bacterial and fungal disease can infect the fruit. Of course, they get their beaks in, uh, they eat bits, uh, but they might damage other fruit, which will then go through some form of fungal disease or rot. Now, the ways to combat that, there are many. Please do watch my uh, videos on the D1 section that go through this in great detail. But of course, we have things like uh, wind, uh, sorry, noise machines. We have things 
like scarecrows, but netting is fairly common. It's expensive, but it does actually uh, have some effect. Although when I have been out in New Zealand, I have seen many, uh, many birds getting within when I've been in New Zealand, I've actually seen many birds getting inside the netting and actually kind of living quite a high life. Irrigation. Now, it may confuse you to think that irrigation needs to be discussed here, um, but we do have uh, some places that will require it. Why? Well, we have high levels of rainfall, but in some zones, there are some free draining alluvial soils uh, and also there are quite significant amounts of wind which can reduce um, the transpiration. It increases evapotranspiration, uh, which means that we lose water within the vine. So often you'll find, you see here, this is Pegasus Bay in North Canterbury. You'll see there is in fact an irrigation line at the bottom of these vines and netting, in fact, in the background there as well. Now, we mentioned wind is an issue. Wind is an issue with increasing evapotranspiration. So windbreaks of trees may be planted, but this creates more habitats for birds. So that can be an issue. There's some windbreaks there from Geisen wines. Sunburn. So sunburn of the fruit is a significant concern given the high UV light and therefore leaf positioning and canopy management is critical in providing some shade for the bunches of grapes. Once again, in my D1, I go through sunburn in much greater detail. Uh, next up, talking about the unsettled weather that we can find. So we know that New Zealand is situated in the South Pacific. Uh, it means that unsettled weather can be quite significant here due to tropical cyclones. So we get flooding, for instance, that you can see. That's the effect of Cyclone Gabriel devastating the harvest in 2023. This was February of 2023. So you can get problems around harvest, of course, but also problems at flowering and fruit set. This reduces yields and can have a significant impact on the fruit quality and in fact, wipe out many of the areas. So unsettled weather. Uh, and lastly, just a little bit on sustainability and organic viticulture. Now, almost all producers in New Zealand are a part of the Sustainable Wine Growing New Zealand Initiative. You'll see the emblem on the left hand side. Now, this includes an independently audited certification program focused on a number of economic, social and environmental parameters. Uh, they pretty much most people are signed up to this. Uh, organic is a little bit tougher due to the conditions. Less than 5% are certified. Some regions with a focus on small scale production such as Central Otago, are much higher at around 17%, but larger zones like Marlborough are less than 4%. Biodynamics, uh, you will find it in places in Gisborne, for example, Serasan in uh, Marlborough, but it tends to be, of course, the exception to the rule. Please do join me for part five when we talk about the key grape variety of Sauvignon Blanc, uh, which is, of course, a very major grape variety in New Zealand. Any questions, any comments, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. Uh, and also, if you find yourself in the UK, come and say hello for a class, glass or bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now.